everybody. My name is Heather and I am doing this live painting 101 for you guys today to help you out and just cover some of the basics. Um, I know I'm a minute early, so hi Anne. So I'm just gonna hang out with you guys for just a few minutes and let some people pop on here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Shannon. <laughs> So uh, I'll just kind of chat for a second while we're waiting for some people to pop on and join us here. Um, I am, uh, actually really quick, I'm going to pull this up on my laptop um, because sometimes it's hard for me to see the questions or the comments. Um, so I'm going to pull it up in two places so I can kind of make sure I can see your guys' questions and all that kind of stuff. Okay, there we go. Oh, now I see a bunch of people on there. Ah, see, I can't see it on my phone. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> okay, so hello, everybody who's hopping on here. Thank you so much. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Melanie. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Laura. So, hey, hey, everybody. So excited to be doing this with you guys today. Okay, so um, so what we're gonna be doing today is I brought a little end table or um, nightstand that I have. I have two of these, I actually have a whole bedroom set. Um, but because it is spring and I'm so excited today, we're actually going to be painting this with Connie Gale, um, our beautiful spring pale yellow. And so, um, really who this class is for today is for all of you who um, are new to um, shabby paints and you're wanting to get some basics and information specific to our products. So if that is you, welcome, excited to have you. And then we're going to be doing this for the new furniture painter as well, who maybe is a little overwhelmed by the process. They feel maybe intimidated by the whole chalk style painting experience and they're worried about all the steps. And so really this is um, for, for both of you. So that's great. And um, Yeah, so, so that's what we're gonna be covering today. We're gonna be covering the basics. So if you're super advanced and you've been painting for a super long time, uh, sorry about that. We're really wanting to reach out to people who are wanting to, to dive into painting and just really give them the, the core foundation. And um, so today we're also doing a paint giveaway. So all that you need to do to be eligible for the giveaway is to um, share this live video and comment and interact, at least one comment. And um, as soon as we hit 50 live viewers, uh, we're going to be randomly selecting a winner. And we will contact you and get you a um, one eight ounce paint. Uh, one eight ounce finish and a blue sponge, which is just the basics that you need to get started. So it's going to be super fun and thank you so much. Hi, Missy. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone who's hopping on. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, so share, 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 and comment away. And um, the other thing that I wanna tell you is that um, I'm going to be answering your questions too. So if you have questions about product usage, if you have questions, um, you know, about just whatever, please ask your questions. I'm going to be trying to talk and paint and watch. <laughs> so um, if I don't see your comment, please actually just type it again and try to get my attention. And if for some reason I did not get to your comment or your question during the live video, um, please go ahead and check the comments after because I will be um, trying to answer your question. And I know that we have several um, several other of our um, shabby staff who are watching live who are also gonna be helping to answer questions and all of that kind of good stuff. So they can also be watching for that as well. So don't get your feelings hurt. If for some reason I don't see your question, just keep trying and I'll definitely try to address it. Um, so before we get started, I also wanted to, um, hi. <laughs> um, so I also wanted to answer a few questions that I saw on our last live video last Friday. And one of those was a really great question that I actually didn't cover. And that was, can you paint over shabby paints? If for some reason you don't like the color or at some point you're going to change your decor or you know if you're just like an artist and you get bored and want to redo everything um, and yeah so that is another one of the things that is super super special about shabby paints is that because we do not use wax top coats because we use our sheer or satin we call it vax um, so this is an amazing top coat. It is completely wax and oil free. Um, so this is a water-based top coat, but it has really, really fabulous protection. So it's actually so um, durable. It's exterior grade, so you can use it on things that go outside and are in the way in the sun and the weather. Um, it never melts in the sun. It's phenomenal. But what's great about it is let's say you want to paint your kitchen cabinets. I would never use a wax product. Um, I used to have people coming into my store in tears who painted their kitchen cabinets and finished them with a wax product. And three years later, it was completely broken down. I mean, a kitchen has grease and steam and all of these different situations that are like wax, grease, steam, not a good mix at all. So anyways, they would be coming in to me to see what they could do. And when I had to tell them that they would have to strip and sand off all of that wax, yeah, tears, real alligator tears. So anyways, that will not happen with shabby paints. If for some reason you get bored and you wanna paint over, you can do that, so that's phenomenal. And uh, let me see, I'm just gonna go ahead and check the computer here and see if I'm missing any questions. Hi, Francis, hi, Francisca, hi, hello, everybody. Oh, thank you for that tip, DJ. Okay, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna keep checking. So like I said before, if you have a question, don't think I'm ignoring you. I'm gonna try to be um, an awesome multitasker, so, okay. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be covering the basics. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get started to honor those of you who are here. Um, okay, so especially if you are new to getting into um, furniture painting, I'm just going to cover a little, um, a few tips. Now, also keep in mind, I've been painting for 20 years. These tips are, um, you know, unique to me. Really and truly, every furniture painter finds their own way. So if you're a veteran painter and you're like, I don't do it that way. I know it's okay. We all have, um, you know, some unique ways that we do it. So these are just some things that are unique to me and, um, some helpful tips from, from Heather to you and also very shabby, shabby paints specific information. Um, so don't get mad at me if you do it different. It's okay. 
And then along those lines, I also wanted to say what I have found in my 20 years of painting is that there really isn't rules. Um, there are suggestions and there are some good protocols that are a good idea to follow, but really I have yet to really, really mess something up. Okay, so, you know, I feel like in many ways painting is very intuitive and finding your own way um, is best and experiment, experiment, experiment and have fun. It is really important to have fun. So something that you may not know about Shabby Paints products is they are totally mixable. So you can mix and create your own colors from the colors that we already have, which is super fun. So if you love one of our colors, but you wish there was a slight variation, mix it up, have some fun. And um, you know, really Shannon and I, and many of the stylists, we are always experimenting and playing around all the time. And this is how we are always finding new techniques new amazing finishes and 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 really it usually always works out so please don't be afraid to just dive in and try and have some fun for sure it's not like rules these are just suggestions um so one of the things that i would really recommend when getting started um is to so some you know i remember when i was getting started in this sometimes i would take anything just because it was free um, so it may have been like super broken or super damaged or, um, you know, it would really, really need a ton of work, um, which is fine if you're into that sort of thing or if you have someone that can help you with repairs or if you're really good at repairs, but, you know, to keep it simple and not as overwhelming when you're getting started, I would recommend finding pieces that have good bones, are not super broken, they just, um, you know, mostly need a refinish. That way it's going to be you know easier for you to jump in and then you're also you know not getting like a garage full of broken stuff and then you're feeling overwhelmed by it I'm just saying that because I've done it um, yeah and so the other thing that you want to do is um, you know if you do have a damaged piece always you know fix the damage before you get started um, we have a really, really wonderful, um, I know it's backwards, but we have a really, really great um, painting 101 packet. It's like five pages long, and this thing is chock full um, of just amazing, helpful tips and information. So <clears throat> maybe Shannon is able to um, post it, or I can try to post this as a file on the page later for you guys. Um, so that you guys can get this because this is great. This is super duper handy. Um, this is going to help you a lot. Um, but if for some reason we're not able to get this posted on the Shabby Paints Facebook page for you guys today, um, you can actually send me an email, heather at shabbypaints.com, and I would be really happy to just send this to you. So it's super nice. So basically, I'm kind of be kind of just going to be going through the packet essentially, and. Um, Good, just checking for questions and thanks for the feedback, you guys. Okay, good, yes, and then um, just another reminder for those of you who are popping on, give away, give away, give away. We're giving away paint. We're giving away your choice of a um, eight ounce paint color, a matte or satin Vax top coat, and a Vax applicator sponge. As soon as we reach 50 viewers, um, those who will be eligible to be randomly selected will be someone who has shared this video and has commented at least one time. So, and yeah. Okay. All right. So the next thing I personally, I know some people paint over hardware. I never, ever, ever, ever do. For me personally, I, it's just like a total pet peeve. I don't like to paint over hardware. I think it looks nice and professional when you take the hardware off clean it if you're going to reuse it, maybe even paint it, give it a fresh new look. Um, but I always like to paint and do my finishing without any hardware for sure. Um, like I said, there's no rules. If you're just getting into it and you don't want it to be too, too overwhelming, paint over the hardware. I don't care. It's up to you, but I do not do that. And, um, okay. So the next step is cleaning 
And so for this particular piece right here, this piece has a really thick and shiny varnish. Um, so what I always, always do in these situations is I always rough this up a little bit with some sandpaper to give it tooth. Now, um, shabby paints is a chalk acrylic, so it bonds, adheres, and cures super hard, even to super slick finishes like a very shiny um, poly or a varnish, glass, metal, all of these things. So it's gonna do great if you skip this step, but because I sell my pieces and I just wanna give it that extra bit of longevity, I always, always rough them up a little bit first. Now, one little tip for me is I, these sanding sponges drive me crazy because they don't last a very long time. So what I do is I'll buy a couple sanding sponges and then I'll actually just buy the sheets of sanding paper. I'll cut them into strips and I'll wrap it around my sponge. And I find that it just lasts a lot longer and you're gonna save a lot of money. Um, so I typically, for distressing and um, doing my little rough up situation, I typically use 100 grit. Now, if you're going to be, um, if you're going to be staining and doing those types of things, um, which I'm actually going to be sanding or stripping, sanding, and then staining the top of this piece, not today, um, but eventually. <laughs> so, um, so I'm not going to be roughing up the top because that needs to be nice and smooth and, and raw wood to do that. Um, but for my um, the, the parts that I'm actually going to be painting, um, you know, I just go along, and I'm not gonna do a ton, I already actually did it, but I just go over my piece a little bit with my sanding paper, and um, I rough it up a little bit, that just creates micro scratches in the super shiny finish, and that's going to give you, um, you know, more uh, ability for the paint to sort of soak into those little scratches and just adhere that much better. So the actual term, I believe, is giving the piece tooth. So that's what I'm doing there with that piece. Now, when I do that, I do that with the dirt on it and everything. <laughs> People might be like, what? Um, yeah, because I don't like to work harder than I have to, you know what I'm saying? So I just, because I'm going to have to wipe everything down after I've done my sanding, um, roughing up, uh, then I just leave the dirt on it so that I only have to do that one time. Yeah, so that's my little tip. I mean, obviously if you've pulled something out of a barn and it's like literally caked in dirt, that's not gonna work. Um, so, you know, always clean it first and then go ahead, do your roughing up, and then of course you need to clean all of that dust off again. Um, so, yes, after I have gone ahead and I have, you know, given my piece tooth, then I go ahead and I use a mixture of 50-50 water and just your plain old cheap old white vinegar and a drop of Dawn dish soap. And this makes a really nice, non-toxic, antibacterial um, cleaning solution for your piece. So it's really, really important to clean your piece really, really well before you get started because you don't want there to be any pledge, any dirt, anything that's going to sort of prevent adhesion. So make sure you clean it really, really well. And, um, and then additionally, always make sure that you also do a, a once over with just plain wet water rag after you've done your vinegar water and Dawn dish soap scenario, just to make sure you've gotten any residue off. You know, let that dry for a few minutes and then you are ready to commence painting. So yeah, all right, so with that said, I am going to just look and see if we have any questions really quick. And again, just remind any of those people who have just popped on, we're doing a paint giveaway today. To be eligible, we need to reach 50 live viewers. And all you need to do to be eligible is to comment and share this video and you will have the possibility of being our lucky winner. So let me check the questions. Hi, 
September. Hi, Melanie. See a bunch of new people popping on here. Thank you. Good. Okay, so, so far I'm not, oh, I see a question, okay. Um, okay, so Vine and Silk Designs is asking, will this help to get rid of cigarette smoke, ooze and tar, gross stuff? And yes, it absolutely will. Um, sometimes it's, you know, like even good to get like a, um, a sponge with you know the scrubby side and you know you might need to really work on that because cigarette smoke can be so penetrating but um, yes so when I have pieces that have been um, you know that are really smoky from cigarette smoke that recipe works really well again that recipe is in the packet and it's so easy you guys one drop of the blue dawn dish soap and then 50-50 warm water and white vinegar, just the cheap stuff. I mean, I buy this stuff at grocery outlet for like $2 or something like that. So, you know, it's just super cheap. And um, yeah, so so that works great. Airing it out, um, sunshine is also good. Now, something that I do for pieces that have a lot of um, like cigarette smoke damage or mold damage is I actually have a, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the word. Um, oh, sorry guys, I'll post it later. I just had a, like a total brain fart, so it's gone. Anyways, I have a special ma machine and um, I'm able to lock a piece in my shed with this machine and it actually will kill mold and it will kill like cigarette smoke um, odors and it's just really amazing, so. Okay. Good. Okay, so now um, now the next step is we're just going to go ahead and st I'm just going to paint this piece with you guys. Um, and we're just going to kind of go through this together. I'm going to try to do it, you know, as quick as possible so that this isn't a boring video. But I also just want to give all of you who are new to painting or who are new to our products just a little bit of a foundation to help you build some confidence. And um, the other thing is, um, at my store, um, I had so many people, they wanted to paint so badly, and they were like really scared to dive in. And it was this just adorable fear. And so if you are this person who really wants to paint, you're super excited about it, but you have this sort of mental block, go to Goodwill and find like a $2 chair or a stool or just a little, you know, nightstand, like $2. If you ruin it, like who cares? Seriously, just get it out of your system, build that confidence and realize that it's actually so, so easy. And the other thing that I wanna say is a lot of people, um, when I would be working at my store, they'd say, well, I can't paint furniture because I'm not creative. Well, I have really good news for you people who classify yourself as not creative. This is a very process oriented situation. So if you can pick out a color and if you can go like this with a brush, you can do it, okay? So don't feel like you can't do it if you're not creative. And in fact, as you practice and as you get into this, you're gonna realize that you actually are creative, I would dare to say. Okay. Okay, um, just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing any questions. Like I said, if I'm not getting to a question, just keep posting it and I promise I'll hopefully see it. And if not, we will get back to you. And um, yeah, and then just another reminder for those of you who are just popping on paint giveaway. All you need to do to be eligible is we need to re reach 50 live um, viewers and you need to comment and share and then you will automatically be eligible. Okay, so just a few little tips for getting started is I usually never, oh, and we're using Connie Gale today because it's spring and I am so excited and I need some color in my life. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. Um, okay, so I'm using Connie Gale today. Now, I normally do not dip out of the jar, but just for time's sake and not wanting to be cumbersome and goofing around with a bunch of stuff, I am going to break my rule today and actually paint out of the jar. But the reason that I usually, um, 
I keep this sort of stuff around, little paper bowls. I know it's not super sustainable, but it's super convenient when you're painting. So I will usually actually put some paint in here and, <clears throat> and paint out of a little paper bowl. And the reason that I do that is because, uh, several reasons actually. For one, shabby paints does not have VOCs, heavy metals, chemicals, all of these different things that are actually going to like prevent um, bacteria from growing in your paint. For one, so if you, you know, like if there's any bacteria still left on this piece of furniture or growing in my brush because brushes get wet and then they sit and you know, that kind of thing, then you're dipping it into your paint. And um, you know, I don't like to introduce bacteria into my paint because I don't want to come back to it two months later and find a science experiment. So um, that's one reason. The other reason is, is when we're dipping directly into our jar, we're getting little drips <clears throat> on the threads of our jar. And what's going to happen is a couple of different things. When you close your jar, even if you're like wiping, 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 it is going to sort of clog into these little um, um, threads <laughs> and um, and you can glue your lid on <laughs> okay I've done it to myself I've locked myself out of my paint now if for some reason you're like oh that's already happened to me um funny this is funny but I will actually go outside and I will gently tap my lid on like concrete gently like I said that will actually break that seal that you've created by gluing yourself out of your paint and then you can get it open but what also happens is when you do have paint all over your threads, it's not going to seal as nice and your paint has the propensity to dry out. So I like to paint out of a um, thing and that way my paint's gonna get a nice seal when it's time to put it away and I don't have to worry about um, introducing bacteria into my beautiful, healthy, clean, sustainable, non-toxic paint. Okay, good, alrighty. And I'm um, just going to check the questions. Oh, woohoo! Okay, so it looks like we are getting, a, we have those 50 viewers. So thank you so much, everybody. And yes, so all of you who are commenting and sharing, that means you're going to be eligible. So keep commenting and sharing, you guys, and you'll be eligible to potentially win an eight ounce jar of paint an eight ounce sealer and our Vax applicator sponge. So that's going to be done randomly. Now that we have 50 viewers, for those of you who are commenting and sharing, so good job. Awesome. Okay, so without further ado, I'm just gonna give you my other little tip. So now I find for a really beautiful professional finish, I like to do thin coats and build. And um, so what this is going to do is this is going to give you a really smooth, really professional, really buttery finish, okay? Um, glopping, what happens when we glop? Um, so a few things happen when we're a glopper, when we take our brush and we just like, you know, got tons of paint on the brush. Um, first of all, it's going to um, make it harder to keep your brush really nice and clean later on. You're going to get it built up way into the threads. And, um, and then the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to have more of a propensity for brush strokes. And so when you use really thin coats and build, you're going to get this really, really gorgeous professional finish. At my store, people were always asking, oh my gosh, how is it so smooth? How is it so beautiful? Well, I'm teaching you my little trick right now. Okay, so what I like to do is I pretty much use like that much. So I just use a little bit at a time, okay? And then what I do, so I'm gonna make sure I'm like not in the way, but I want you to see. Okay, all right, how's this, you guys? Okay, so what I do is I will take what I put on my brush and I will try to smooth it out as much as I can. And what you're gonna find by doing this, oh, and always keep a nice little damp cloth nearby for boo-boos, okay? Um, so what I find that when I do this is First of all, I'm gonna get a lot less drips and things that you may not see while you're working and then you find later and are kind of a problem. 
Um, so that's something to just keep an eye out for while you're working, because that's kind of a beginner's mistake, is to not see your drip until it's totally petrified on you, which is not fun, okay? So I do these really, really beautiful thin coats and build. So I worked this through as far as I can. I'm going in for another little dip. I'm not using very much. I'm just keeping it on the tip of my brush, okay? Once in a while, I'll go along and just any little glops on the sides that are going to maybe prevent the drawers from sliding in and out nicely. I'm going to definitely watch out for those. Okay. Again, going on for just another little dip, just the tip of my brush. I mean, obviously when you're doing like a ginormous buffet or something like that, I mean, you're gonna want a little more and then spread that out as thin as you can. Um, but I find that this is just a really nice, a really nice tip. Now, the other thing that you're gonna notice is you saw how little paint I was using. Look at the coverage, you guys. I mean, are you freaking out? This coverage is so, Beautiful, it is so amazing. And with, you know, um, so with shabby paints, there's no need to prime, there's no need to strip. We're going right over the old finish. All I did was just give it a little tiny rough up with my sanding sponge and we're working, we're painting. I mean, how easy is that, you guys? So the other thing that I really, really like about doing these really beautiful, thin, almost kind of powder coats is that by the time you get from one side to the other, it's, it's dang near almost dry and ready for another coat. So it's not like you're going to be waiting a super long time by doing this. It's not going to slow you down. Sometimes people think more is better and um, I don't think so, not, not in this situation. So hold on a second, just let me check the comments and make sure I'm catching your guys' question. Ha, huh, yes, Betty, Vax is the icing on the cake. It is so amazing. So for any of those who are, you know, currently using wax products, I am going to be your new best friend because this is going to absolutely change your life. Oh my goodness. Hi, GC. Thank you. I hope that's pronounced right. Thank you for joining us. So glad to see you. Welcome, welcome. Yes, hi. Okay. All right. Well, if for some reason I missed a question, please ask it again. And hopefully I will catch it. So I'm sorry if I missed it. And we do have some moderators on here trying to answer your questions as well. So please don't be sad if I missed your question. Just keep asking, okay? Yes. Um, so oh, I did see a question. So this color is Connie Gale. Isn't it so pretty? Oh my goodness. I absolutely love it. Um, okay, so Deborah is asking where can you buy the Vax products, which is this right here. Um, we have matte Vax and satin Vax, and these are um, for sealing. And um, so you can buy these. Um, so we have a retailer map on shabbypaints.com where you can find your local retailer and you can purchase Vax products. You can actually purchase on um, shabbypaints.com. We, many, many, many of our shabby paint stylists have online stores and shipping is usually very fast. So definitely support our stylists because they're amazing. Um, yeah, so you have a lot of different options for buying this, okay? Okay, good. All 
Alrighty. Um, so just really quickly, I'm going to give this just a moment to dry a little more. And hello to any of you who are just popping on. We are going through our painting 101 covering the basics today. Again, we are doing a giveaway now that we've reached over 50 live viewers. So make sure that you've commented and shared because that's going to make it so you're eligible to be chosen to um, have one eight ounce uh, paint jar, one eight ounce um, finishing and our finishing sponge. So you'll be eligible for that giveaway if you've shared and commented. Do you have to sand your project first? Great question. So I did cover that briefly in the beginning. Um, so no, you do not need to sand your project first. Um, this particular piece has a very shiny, thick, like polyurethane on it. Um, so what I did, sorry, oh, you're already gone, so I missed your name. So, um, but what I did was I just took 100 grit sandpaper, wrapped around a sanding sponge, and I just quickly, and I mean under two minutes, I just went over my project really quick. I roughed it up. I created some micro scratches in the piece, and then, um, you know, I made sure and I got all of my sanding dust off again before I started. The whole process took me under five minutes, and those micro scratches just create tooth in your piece. And that's just going to give you extra adhesion and extra um, you know, durability. But Shabby Paints products are a chalk acrylic, so the, um, the adhesion and the cure strength is already phenomenal. So um, you can get away without doing that step um, because you can use these products on glass, metal, fabric. They are so, so versatile. Um, but doing that extra step on your wood furniture pieces, if they have a very shiny finish on them, is just going to give it that little extra durability, okay? Okay, can you use a Vax product over an already painted piece? Um, that's a little tricky, okay? So if the piece was painted um, with a shabby paints paint, um, so you know, it's it's one of those things. Vax works better with our products because they were formulated for our products. Um, I do know people who were trying to get rid of a little extra paint that they had, and they did use a Vax product instead of wax over some other brand of paint, and it did work okay. We don't recommend that because we can't guarantee it. Um, so the way that we know what our products were tested for. Um, so, oh, we have a winner. Dawn Hand is the winner of our Shabby Paints giveaway. So congratulations, Dawn. Woohoo, yay. Um, okay, so Dawn Hand, make sure that you message us so we can get your address and so that we can ship out your giveaway. Awesome, congratulations. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome, Dawn. Thank you for joining us. Um, okay, circling the wagons back around. Um, oh, yes, so as far as using Vax over other painted products, it can be a little tricky. It depends on if you know what was used on it. So for example, if you, had a piece that was shainted, painted with shabby paints. It never was sealed or finished because once you've finished our products with Vax, you don't need to redo it every year like with wax products. So once it's done, it's done, you guys. So that's phenomenal, okay? Um, but, you know, it's tricky because you don't know what it was used for. So we don't know how the Vax is going to respond to whatever it was used on. So. It's risky. Um, you could experiment with it, but again, um, you can, however, use a Vax on like raw wood. So if you have some kind of like raw wood um, bench or anything like that and you don't want to stain it, you can seal that with Vax, okay? And that's going to hold up in the sun and the weather and it's going to be amazing. Um, but yeah, again, as far as other painted pieces, if you don't know what was used on it, it's like, eh. Um, let's see, okay, um, all right, well, 
if I missed another question, please repost. I'm trying to pay attention to that. All right, so you guys, this is amazing. This is dry already, okay? So that is phenomenal. So for those of you who missed it, um, oh, and I missed this little bit right here. I get to talking and I forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, so um, for those of you who might have missed it, when I am applying paint, I like to do thin coats and build because it gives you a really beautiful professional finished, okay? So when I dip my brush in when I'm using, or when I'm painting a small piece like that, I literally just put the tip in the jar. And again, sorry, this is a really bad, nasty habit. I shouldn't be doing this on this live video. I don't usually paint out of the jar. Um, you can actually go back and watch the replay um, to find out why I don't do that, but there's several reasons why. Um, so I usually will actually just pour some paint into like a paper bowl and use that. Okay? Okay. All right, so you saw how little paint that I used. You saw how thin of a coat that was. I mean, seriously, you guys, I have used like no paint at all. Um, so our products go a really long way and that's something that we're super duper proud of. Now, for the sake of keeping this like a short watchable video, I'm not going to be like going crazy and painting this entire piece. I just wanna give you some tips I just want to give you the basics, and um, I, I did bring um, also, in addition to this, I did bring a piece of raw wood because I do want to show you our stains and glazes because they're phenomenal and you're going to be really excited about it. So I'm super excited to show you our stains. Um, it's like a stain, a top coat, and a glaze in one. I'm really, really excited to show you that. So stay tuned in a minute, and I'm going to be showing you that while we're waiting for this to dry. And then once this dries, I'm going to be demonstrating how to do um, distressing. Okay. Yeah, so if any of you out there are using stains, well, okay, I don't wanna say brand names because that's not nice, but the kind of stains that are filled with chemicals and have a lot of fumes where you're out in the garage with hopefully a gas mask, you guys. If you use that stuff, seriously, you do not wanna be breathing that in. You need to be protecting yourself. But what I'm going to be showing you in a few minutes is going to change your life because our Shabby Paints Revax has absolutely no fumes. It's so easy to use. It dries in minutes and it is like an absolutely gorgeous stain. And it also doubles as a glaze, so, and a top coat. So it's a total multitasker and it's absolutely phenomenal. So again, like I said before, just really, really beautiful, super thin coats. I had barely any paint. Um, when you're doing, you know, you wanna make sure that you're not getting drips in your little drawer areas because that can um, you know cause you problems later on with your drawers not fitting properly especially if it's an antique those uh, they don't have you know newer drawer slides and they can be kind of a pain in the butt so always make sure you're watching for drips and glops as you're going it's a lot easier to just wipe them up as you're going than it is to try to get them off when they're petrified and you realize that you missed it. It's always kind of annoying. Okay, so there's one, one more, just super, super gorgeous thin coat. And this thing is phenomenal. It's already almost completely covered. Um, so that's how great our coverage is. I am so, so proud and in love with shabby paints. They're so much fun to use and they're such an amazing value. Okay, going to check the comments. 
Oh, okay. Yes, so someone was just commenting, um, Melanie was just commenting about how nice it is to be able to work indoors with shabby paints. Yes, you guys, okay. So I have a super busy family, lots of stuff going on. I do not wanna freeze my butt off on the back porch or in the garage, you guys. Like, I like to be in earshot of the kids. I like to have the TV going. I'll actually just put a drop cloth on my kitchen table or um, you know, in the corner of a room and I'll just paint while I'm talking on the phone, while I'm watching TV, switching laundry, listening to the kids. It's so nice, you guys. I love that you can paint with our products and you don't have to worry about the health and safety of your family. It's something that I, um, and you can feel really good about. So for those of you who don't know also, um, our paints and products have absolutely no chemicals, no VOCs, no heavy metals, and um, they're made with love in the United States and with integrity, so you can feel super good about that. Hello from Illinois. Hi, Sherry. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Hello, Gloria. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, Michelle, the paint is self-leveling and it does not require any primer. It is so gorgeous and it's so beautiful. Um, Donna, love the color. Yeah, this is Connie Gale. I absolutely love it too. Perfect for spring. Okay, all right. Um, I am going to, yeah, okay. So you guys, I just did this. It is literally almost dry again. That is so nice. Telling ya. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this off to the side for a minute. And I'm going to demonstrate for you how to use our Shabby Paints Revax, which comes in driftwood, hazelnut, and black. And by the way, these are mixable and layerable. So you can do layers and create kind of a fun sort of thing. Um, you can use them just by themselves. You can use them as a glaze over paint to get that beautiful shabby patina. This is like all that in a bag of chips, you guys. But I'm going to be demonstrating it on raw wood for you guys so you can see how absolutely stunning it is, how beautiful it is, how quick it is. It is amazing. Okay, so. What I like to do is I actually like to, so one of the things that I love about shabby paints is how quickly it dries, but sometimes raw wood is very, very thirsty and it starts drying on me a little too quickly. And I like to make sure I have a really, really smooth, really, really even application um, before I add another coat and another layer because it just looks super nice and professional. So what I will do is I will take a wet washcloth, okay, and I will go over my piece that I'm going to be staining, and this is just a scrap piece of wood I had in my garage, because uh, I wanted to show this to you guys, okay. So I just go over it, and now this is the same principle if you were using a stinky type stain, um, a super toxic kind of stain where you would use like um, mineral spirits to open up the grain. You're just using a wet washcloth, just water, okay. And what that's going to do is that's going to, um, it's going to open up the grain and then it's also going to give you um, a little bit more open time for working your um, stain in, okay? So give me just one second and let me get this um, together. So um, always shake first, okay? Shaking. Now, um, you don't need a lot, okay? So I pretty much work with about this much at a time. Now, this is our Shabby Paints applicator. I've just got a cute little, oops, cute little bucket full of water here. And how you apply our finishes and our stains is with just, um, our shabby paints applicator. So what I've done is I have completely soaked this and then I have wrung it out completely. So you want it to be nice and damp, but not dripping, okay? All right, so I'm gonna try to have 
I don't know if I have enough hands here, you guys. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you can see this really well. Okay, I'm just gonna sort of. Hi from Virginia. Hi, Marie. Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, for those of you who may have missed it, I'm getting ready to demonstrate our Shabby Paints Revax being used on raw wood as a stain. Okay, you guys? So, I've just put about this much in my little paper bowl. Hi, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so I have just put some hazelnut on my sponge. Okay, you guys. Look at this. Now, I want you to know there is like no smell. There is absolutely no smell at all. <laughs> And this also has the top coat built into it. So this is a stain, a glaze, and a top coat all in one. The only thing that this doesn't do is it doesn't do dishes, okay? These are exterior rated. You can use these on outdoor benches. I actually have a deck that I stained with this. Okay. So again, just like with painting, I like to do thin coats and build. You're gonna get a really nice, really beautiful, professional finish when you do thin coats and build. Okay. And this is gonna be dry in about, it just, it's drying now, it's literally almost dry. Okay, so just gonna set this off to the side for a minute and then we're gonna give this another coat in a second because I just want you to see how absolutely stunning the second coat is and how easy and quick this is. You're gonna love it, you guys. Um, all right, just give me one second to see if there's any questions from y'all. Hi, Donna, very bright and cheery, yes. I love uh, Connie Gale, this color is so cute. Hi, Luana, thank you for joining us. Okay, all right, so I didn't see any questions, so please, if you had a question and I missed it, please just go ahead and type it again and I'm gonna be watching for that, okay. Yeah, and uh, Deanna, I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Yeah, doesn't that look amazing? And I am inside right now. I am inside, so, and uh, it's amazing. Yes, and this is the prettiest yellow. This is Connie Gale. I was feeling in like a spring mood, so had to have it. Needed something cheery, you know? It's been a long winter, you guys. Okay, so yeah, so this um, this piece that I that I did one coat of stain, you saw I used probably a generous quarter sized amount, and that was it. And it did this whole thing. So yeah. All right. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do another coat on here of our beautiful Connie Gale. For those of you who have missed it. I literally just dip the tip of my brush in and I do thin coats and build and that's going to reduce brush strokes and just give you a gorgeous finish. Um, <clears throat> my last coat that I put on here was probably less than five minutes ago and it's already dry. So when you're doing thin coats and building, um, it dries so quick that you're able to do your next coat and nothing flat, which is great. And then, you know, after I have dipped my brush in, I really just kind of work the paint as far as it will go um, before I re-dip. And that's just gonna give you this really beautiful, smooth, professional finish. People are always um, asking me how I get such a nice, smooth finish, and it's because I don't glop. And it's gonna help you to um, also uh, not get as many drips, okay? 
I also watch for drifts as I'm going because I absolutely hate it when I missed a drift and it's like petrified on my piece later and I'm having to like try to get it off. Okay, so yeah, so thin coats that are just built up is just going to give you a really beautiful finish. I mean, this looks, I know you guys, it might not be as clear on the camera, but this is so pretty, you guys. It's so pretty. So this isn't, a, just so this doesn't end up being a really long, annoying video, I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going to go crazy. I want to be able to show you guys um, distressing if you have never done that. Now, again, a lot of you might be veteran furniture painters and you're like, I already know all this stuff, so that's fine. We were just wanting to do this for those of you who are wanting to get into furniture painting, wanting some more information about specific product usage for shabby paints, um, you know, or may not, may not be, may not have dove in yet and are just wanting the foundation, okay? So this is kind of for our beginners group. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and let that dry for a few minutes before I demonstrate how to distress. And um, yeah, and then I'm not going to do it today, but I often like to mix our Revax um, stains. It's a stain, glaze, and a top coat in one. And, um, you know, if I am wanting something that is darker than the hazelnut but isn't black, Mix it, mix it and get the exact color that you want. You can get a beautiful um, espresso color. You can layer these. So often I'll do like a, um, a layer of hazelnut, a layer of black. You're gonna get a really beautiful finish doing that. Um, we also have driftwood as well, which I did not bring. Just brought these two today. All righty. So um, for any of those who missed the demonstration for the first coat of the hazelnut revax used as a stain on raw wood, I am literally just using, um, you know, a little over a quarter sized amount of product at a time. I have my Shabby Paints Blue Applicator Sponge here, which I have gotten wet and I have wrung it out completely so it's nice and damp but it's not dripping. And then all I do is I have my Revax in the bowl here. I've uh, got about that much on my sponge, okay? And then I just will wipe this so it's beautiful and smooth. And this is the second coat, you guys. No fumes, no chemicals. No freezing your butt off outside. It's that easy. There's no smell. I'm sitting inside right now, warm and toasty. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, Deborah, I'm so glad that you have joined us and I'm so glad that this is helpful. Um, if you just popped on, please go ahead and watch the whole video because there's a lot of great tips. And then um, we're going to be trying to post our um, really handy furniture painting 101 packet. It's about five pages packed full of a lot of really great information for you guys. Now, if for some reason we're not able to post it on the Shabby Paints page, like under files or something for you guys, um, email me, Heather at shabbypaints.com and I would be happy to send that to you, okay? Um, you're welcome, Kathy. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, so, um, so I'm just gonna let these both dry for a little bit longer before I go into um, showing you how to distress if you don't already know how to do that. Um, so now would be a really, really great time if any of you had some questions, okay? And kind of the flow of what we're going to do is after um, I show you some basic distressing, then I'm going to show you how to use our Shabby Paints top coat. We have, um, well, today I'm going to be using Matte Vax. 
So, um, I guess I'll just spend a moment. Oh, you're welcome, Deborah. Um, I'm just gonna spend a moment telling you the difference between our matte and our satin, okay? Now, if you're a person who really loves the super matte farm style look that's going on right now, um, matte vax is probably going to be the one that you want. It keeps it really matte and shabby. It's very beautiful. Now, if you have a piece that's like got lots of curves and is a little more polished and you want something that has a little bit of a sheen, then you're gonna wanna use our satin vax, okay? Now, um, while both of them are so, so protective and they're great, um, there's a few advantages to these satin vax. So the satin vax is going to give you a little extra protection for things that are gonna go outside especially if you have like extreme weather conditions, like lots of rain here in Oregon. I like to use the satin when I'm doing things outside. Now, like on my chicken coop, I wanted it to be really shabby. I use the matte vax and it has held up really, really well. So I don't know if it makes a difference, but I always just kind of feel like that extra bit of sheen gives it just an extra layer of protection. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like it does. And then also um, when I'm doing a tabletop, I will use satin um, because I feel like um, you know, it just gives it that extra layer of protection and it makes it, you know, really nice for wiping off, which they both do phenomenal. Um, so matte vax is going to give you that really shabby look, that really matte finish, matte finish look. Okay. And the satin vax is going to give you a little bit more of a sheen. Okay. All right. Let me see. Yes, Marie, you will be able to replay the video. So after I'm done, it's going to be posted um, forever, I think. And you can go back and you can actually refer to it as many times as you like. Um, any, any questions, you guys? Oh, thank you, Melanie, that's nice. <laughs> Um, and also, I just want to say to you guys, while we have a few minutes to kill here, is that we really want to tailor these videos to you and what you need. So please write in the comments the kinds of things that you want to see, all the questions that you have. Please don't be shy, okay? I mean, I can ramble on forever, but I'd really like to sort of tailor them to what you guys are wanting. <laughs> Yeah, and then also any of you who have, um, you know, any other questions, um, we have a wonderful uh, Shabby Stylist program. So this is how you can get involved in being a retailer with Shabby Paints. We have an incredible affiliate program. So if you're someone that has a blog or loves to paint and is always sharing posts, you can, um, you know, get benefits for doing what you already do. So you can totally check into that. Um, we're going to be, oh, thank you, all in on business, great live, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Oh, Michelle, you've been missing out on shabby paints? Oh no, I mean, okay, you guys, these paints are absolutely phenomenal, so just for those of you who may not know some really special things about shabby paints um, shabby paints is a chalk acrylic they cure and adhere to a much harder more durable finish the pigment is phenomenal they go such a long way okay so while painting this like i have not even used hardly a drop of this eight ounce jar you guys this is crazy like this can paint a pretty large dresser um so <laughs> The value is absolutely phenomenal. Again, you can paint inside, no chemicals, no fumes, no baggage, no weird stuff. And I like to always joke around that these products are husband proof and toddler proof, okay? <laughs> they're so durable, they're so strong, and um, the pigments last such a long time, and our top coats are literally like indestructible, so they're going to serve you well, okay? so water rings, all these things, there's no waxing, there's no buffing, there's no reapplying year after year. Once you've applied our top coat, you're done. And it's good to go for literally ever, it's amazing. And if you ever change your mind, you can paint right over them. You do not need to strip or sand like you do with wax products. So 
You're welcome. And if you guys are painting cabinets in a kitchen or in a bathroom or anything like that, grease and steam, no. You do not want to be using wax products. You want to be using shabby paints for sure. Okay. Okay, so still a little tacky, so I'm still killing time. <laughs> shabby Shannon likes the husband proof. <laughs> I'm serious, like it's, it'll hold up to the man child, you guys. All right. Um, so, any other questions while we're killing some time here, waiting for things to dry? Kathy asked about local distributors. Yes, good question. Um, okay, so now if you guys go to www.shabbypaints.com, you're going to see a tab that says find a retailer, okay? Now that's gonna show you a map of everywhere where all of our physical uh, retailers are. And um, you can also search by like, I think zip code in town and you can find your zip code there. And I would just wanna put a little shout out that there is a lot of opportunity with our company right now and it's very fast growing. These products are very special. They are unlike anything on the market. Um, they're made without chemicals. They're made in the United States. They're made with love and integrity. They're vegan. They're not tested on animals. You can paint inside the house. Like I said, exterior grade, like I can go on and on and on. So adding these to your booth, to your blog, to your website, going to be next level so while there's availability I would totally check it out we have protected territories so if you um, you know become a stylist we call it a shabby paint stylist if you become a stylist with us you're never gonna have to worry about someone moving in across the street and selling shabby paints so we protect your investment and we honor you in that way and you can get started for as little as $500 so you're welcome Um, okay, so Marie, great question. She wants to know if the paint will go over dark wood. Oh my gosh, the pigments for our paint are absolutely amazing. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is if you are going to be using like a very, very light color, pretty much just um, like Snow White or Alamo White. I don't even find this as much with Worn White, but you could just, you know, just in case. Um, so any white products, if you're going over a antique cherry or mahogany, you can get this really annoying problem called bleed through. Now this is pretty much with any product and what happens is when you're painting over a mahogany or a cherry or some of these stains, um, the paint can actually reactivate some of the chemicals in that stain and it will come through your paint and it will look kind of pinkish. Have you guys had that problem? It's super annoying. So what you can do in the event of that is when you're going to be painting a really dark piece um, with a very light color, um, all that you need to worry about, and even, okay, so I jump around, sorry, but like Connie Gale, I wouldn't even worry about this with Connie Gale. I don't even think I'd have a problem. If it has some pigment in it, it's going to cover like beautifully. It's gonna be amazing. Um, okay, but if you are having a bleed through problem, so before I get started on a mahogany cherry super dark piece, um, I do a test spot on like, you know, the side or the back. I'll check to see if it's gonna be a, what I call a bleeder. Okay, and if you do have a bleeder, what you're going to do is you are going to go ahead and you're going to do one coat of our Shabby Paints Vax Satin or Matte before you paint, okay? And what that's going to do is that's gonna create a barrier between that old stain and the paint so that it's not gonna bleed through on you, okay? So that this is how you're gonna be saved from that whole bleeding problem. So, um, yeah, so that would be, that would be the situation um, for, for bleeding through. But other than that, 
Oh my gosh, even our light grays, you can go over mahogany and it literally almost covers in one coat. It's so nice, it's amazing. It's gonna save you so much time and so much money. You're gonna love it. So for those of you that didn't hear, we have a really great packet. It's called our Painting 101 Packet. It's about five pages long and it just has a ton of information in here. We're gonna try to post it um, on the Shabby Paints uh, Facebook page. If for some reason we're not able to, please email me, heather at shabbypaints.com. I would love to send you this, especially if you're a beginner, if you're just getting started with our products, because this really covers everything. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit limited in the live video trying to do everything, so I'm missing a bunch of steps. So please check this out. It's gonna help you a lot. And definitely, um, I also wanna hear from you as well. So if there are topics and things that would be really helpful for you, um, that you would like covered in these videos or just things that you're interested in certain paint techniques We really want to tailor these to you. We're going to be doing this every Friday And um, so we definitely want to hear from you and see what would be the most helpful. Okay, you guys Hi, Trisha. Thank you for joining us Okay, so again, we have the question can you paint over a shiny surface? Yes, you can paint glass, you can paint metal, you can paint things. So this particular piece right here has a really thick, annoying polyurethane on it. And um, so all I did, like I mentioned before, um, and I'll just mention it again. I hope I'm not boring anyone that's been hanging in there the whole time, but I'm still waiting for the paint to finish drying so I can show you the distressing. So I'm just gonna ramble for a minute. So um, yeah, so I just took 100 grit sandpaper uh, cut into a strip and wrapped around a little old sanding sponge and I just went over my piece. I left the top because I'm going to be sanding this and staining it with uh, Shabby Paints Hazelnut Rebax, which is going to look like this. Mm -hmm. So pretty. Okay, so I'm going to be doing that uh, later. So I'm leaving the top. So what I did on um, all of the areas that I was gonna paint is I just went over with my sanding sponge and I roughed it up a little bit. And I'm talking like, you're not taking finish off. You're just creating micro scratches so that you, um, it just creates tiny scratches that the paint can absorb and grab onto that gives it that extra degree of durability. Now that is not an essential step. You do not have to do that if you don't want to. It's still going to it's still going to adhere phenomenally and it's gonna hold up for a really long, long time. It's just something that I do because I paint professionally. I sell my pieces and I want them to be indestructible. So I go ahead and do this roughing up scenario before I get started because I know it's gonna give it that much extra goodness and durability and longevity for the future. Oh yeah, um, and the other thing to take note of with really shiny surfaces, glass, metal, um, things that are sealed with a poly, that sort of a thing, um, it's really a good idea to let it cure for a long time before you start messing with it. Um, because within the first 24 to 48 hours, um, the paint will be more susceptible to scratching um, because it hasn't cured all the way. Um, but if you let it cure all the way before you start messing with it, so if you're doing a lamp or something that's glass or metal or something like that, um, after you've painted it and finished it, just let it cure for a while and it's gonna be really, really durable for you. So that's one tip before you move it um, or start you know, placing heavy objects on something or doing whatever, just leave it and let it cure and then you're gonna have a really good, strong, durable finish. Okay, so I don't want this to be too long and boring. So, so usually I would do one more coat before I would distress, okay? Usually I would let it dry for just a little bit longer before I distress, but for the sake of just teaching, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it so that you guys know what to do, okay? All right, so what? Um, the other thing that I do when I'm working um, so that I don't have to go and rush off and um, wash brushes in between what I'm doing is I'll just keep a little bucket of water nearby I'll set my brushes in there, and then as soon as I'm done um, doing the important stuff, then I'll go um, rinse them and wash them off. And by the way, I also wanted to mention that um, most of our shabby paint stylists carry what we call scrubby soap. Now you'll see that, oh yeah, I get paint in my fingers, sometimes in my fingernails. So this is a 
brush um, cleaner, a brush conditioner, and this is also phenomenal for your hands. Also, if you know someone who is a mechanic or a gardener or does pottery, this stuff is so amazing. Like, I wish that you guys could smell this. This is the lime. Oh my gosh, it is so, so beautiful. Um, so really, really good for conditioning your brush. It has aloe and essential oils and things that are gonna keep some of your more expensive brushes um, nice for a really long time, okay? And then um, it's also just really amazing for getting the paint off your hands. And again, like all of the stuff that we um, use and that we uh, carry with our products, non-toxic, made in the USA, made with love and integrity, so. Okay, so when I'm distressing, I just keep, uh, okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to keep rolling through, you guys. Okay, so when I'm distressing, I just keep a damp washcloth with just only water, no vinegar or anything like that this time. Okay, and then I'll usually, so this isn't as dry as I want, so I'm just going to be very careful um, doing this, but usually I would just dampen the area where I'm going to be distressing. Okay, and then really when you're doing distressing, um, I really just stick to the natural edges, okay? So just all of these little edges and all of the places where things will naturally wear over time. It's just gonna give you a beautiful, natural, shabby look. Um, I typically, now it depends on what I'm doing. If I want like a very, very subtle um, distress, then I'll use like a very fine grit sandpaper. If I want something a little bit more shabby, I'm gonna use what I'm using today, which is 100 grit. I tend to really love the shabby farmhouse style look, so I usually use 100. Um, but again, play with it, find what works for you. Um, it's not a big deal because guess what, you guys? If you accidentally distress a little bit too much, it's not the end of the world. Just get some paint and put some paint back on it and you're, you're good to go. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're just going to paint, or you're just going to distress all of the natural edges where things would naturally wear. Now, you can definitely, um, you can definitely like, you know, do a little rogue spot here and there, but for some reason, it just doesn't look super natural. Um, so I tend to not do it, but like I said, there are no rules. Painting is personal. Have fun with this. Play with it. Test it out. Try things. Fail. Fix it. And just have fun, okay? Like, get a little tiny $2 chair from Goodwill and just practice and play around and, yeah. Doesn't have to be scary, okay, you guys? All right. So when I'm working and I'm doing my distressing, after I've distressed an area, I will wipe the dust back. And that Sometimes it's hard to see what you've done until you do your wipe and you've wiped away the dust. Now, typically when I would be doing um, distressing, if I'm like gonna be distressing this entire piece, I would use a little dust mask, okay? Um, it doesn't matter that there's no chemicals, no VOCs, anything like that. Anytime you're doing anything working with dust, please wear a mask. It's just good protocol, okay? You don't want that in your lungs, even if it's not toxic. See how easy this is, you guys? Amazing, that's awesome. It's so easy. Now, I don't know if you guys are actually able to see the benefit of what I'm doing, but um, but it looks really, really cute. If you guys can see that, but it looks adorable. Oh, hi, Barry. Thank you. It is 
It's a great band or brand. Thank you for supporting us. Oh, Lisa, if you have not tried shabby paints, like no word of a lie, you need to get some right now and try it because um, it is absolutely the best product on the market, hands down. Um, Lisa, if you watched our last live video from last Friday, I really touch on all of the amazing reasons why shabby paints is super special. I would totally recommend watching that video because I think it's gonna give you some information that's gonna change your whole painting experience seriously. Um, yes, Michelle, you can wet distress with shabby paints. Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind though, you're going to want to do a wet distress um, really quickly after first painting because of the amazing durability, the adhesion, and the cure. Um, if you come back and try to do a wet distress the next day, mm -mm, it's not going to be good. I said you guys this is just a super quick thing after this I'm gonna be going and doing another coat um, and actually redoing this but just for the value of helping you to learn today um, I'm not gonna be doing another coat I just want to be able to show you so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to demonstrate using our amazing top coat You guys, if you are wax users, please pay attention to this because this is going to change your life and I'm serious. Okay, so I'm going to be using Shabby Paints Matte Vax today. Giving it a good shake. And um, really, you only need to, you know, I, I just use about, about this much at a time and you're gonna be literally so amazed how far this goes. Now, this is exterior grade, so you can use this on things that go outside. This does not have to be buffed or anything crazy like that. This goes on in minutes. It's dry in minutes, and when it cures, it is literally indestructible, and it can be out in the weather, out in the sun, and you do not have to reapply it year after year. It's going to be really easy to clean. It's going to be um, you know, a total game changer for you, so you're definitely going to want to pick up some back. Okay. All right, so how our Vax works? I just have a, a little thing of water here. I have dipped my sponge in water. I have gotten it wet and I have wrung it out, okay? I want it all the way wrung out so that it is nice and damp, but it's not dripping. Um, the other thing that I wanted to explain before I get started, so this is very small, so it's kind of hard to demonstrate all of this for you on a video, um, but... Okay, so I like to get a little mister from the dollar store so that every time I need to redampen my sponge, I'm not actually like getting it completely wet and wringing it out. And the reason why I do this is because the, the product is actually gonna build up in your sponge. And so if you just do a light mist instead of redipping, um, all that's built up in there is just gonna make your product go that much further and it's gonna save you money and it's just sustainable. Okay, so I keep that nearby. Now, if I'm doing a large piece like a dresser or a hutch or a buffet or something like that, I find that this amount that I have right here, a little bit more than a quarter sized amount, is going to cover about six to eight nice long strokes. And then I'll add more and I'll re-dip, okay? And what I find is about every third time I've done that, so nice six to eight, nice big strokes, 
is what I usually get out of this. Um, that's when I would re. Uh, that's when I would give my my sponge a squirt. Okay, about every third time. Okay, and um, and the other thing I just want to mention too um, is that okay, like most products, like a poly or a wax or something gross like that, um, you're actually trying to like create a layer. You're trying to put a bunch on. That's not what you're trying to do with shabby paints, okay? What you're doing is you're really pushing the product into the thirsty pores of the chalk paint. And what it does is it actually absorbs into the paint and it bonds with the paint. So you're not like trying to put a thick layer on top, okay? You're not gonna want to do that. That's not, and that's not how it works, okay? So I am just using a little teeny tiny bit and I'm working it into the paint. I'm not trying to create like a layer. I'm trying to push and work it in so that it's going to bond with my paint. Okay. I'm using a matte wax today because I want this to stay truly matte and shabby. So it is coming off just a little bit because it was not ready to be sealed, so but that's okay. I'm able to demonstrate the technique for you. Okay, so that, you guys, is literally one Vax coat. So I will usually come back maybe 20 minutes or an hour later. I will give it a second coat. I'll let it cure, and guess what? It never has to be done again. And what did that take me? Under a minute, probably? Yeah, so, and now this can go outside. This will stand up to grease or steam or anything weird. Um, it's gonna hold up and it's gonna be phenomenal. So, yeah, so that's the top coat, you guys. Um, and then I did demonstrate for you guys um, the stains, um, our, well, our Shabby Paints Revax. Um, but this also, so not only can you use this as a stain on raw wood, um, but you can also use this as a glaze to get a beautiful shabby patina, which I'm not going to be doing that today, but um, hopefully, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next week yet, but maybe I'll be doing advanced um, stuff for you guys, um, like how to use the Revax, how to do dry brushing, any other things that you may like to know, stuff like that, so. All right, so, so you guys, this is pretty much it for the basics. Um, please, if you have any questions that you would like answered right now while you have me on here, please just let me know and ask away. I'm going to be watching for those. Um, and then before we close, I just wanted to give a really awesome shout out to Jenny, the owner of the Fleur de la Vie Home Decor here in McMinnville, Oregon. I'm actually doing this live video in the basement of her beautiful store. If you go ahead and watch last, bleh, last week's live video, um, I did it upstairs and it is an absolutely beautiful store and Jenny is amazing. So she was tagged in this live video so you can click that and kind of see some of her stuff. Um, so definitely you guys show Jenny some love for supporting Shabby Paints. Um, definitely visit. She has an amazing Etsy store. I don't know if you can see behind me, um, but she makes these really, really beautiful um, leaves. Um, so she has these in her Etsy store. Isn't this pretty, you guys? Oh my gosh, it's stunning. Um, she has a Shopify store. She ships all over the United States and internationally. Um, <clears throat> And um, for all of our Shabby Paints viewers who are watching, she has given a coupon code that you can use for 15% off, 15 off anything in her store. So you can check that out. That's uh, coupon code SHABBY19. And um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, I will be going through and reading all of these after we're done and um, 
if someone hasn't gotten back to you, then I will definitely be answering your questions. Um, if you have questions, if you have ideas for things that would be helpful for you, you can please type them in the comments for videos that you would like to see, or you can email me, heather at shabbypaints.com. I'm happy to connect with you. Um, definitely, we want to get you our Painting 101 Furniture Packet. It's about five pages long. It has a lot of really good information in it. And um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for connecting with me. My name is Heather and um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be connecting with all of you and doing these live videos. You can catch us, we're gonna be doing this every Friday. So um, you can catch us and see what we're up to. And um, yeah, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a beautiful week and I will see you next time.